Hey everybody, I'm Nick DiMatteo and welcome to week 178 and video episode number 4 of 4T, the Thursday throwback track. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, every week I take uh, an album or single from my collection and I discuss why I have it, why it's interesting to me, and how it influenced the music that I do in hopes that uh, we can start a discussion. And, and so don't forget, please always leave your comments, uh, anything at all, whether it's about this album or some other album or any, I don't even care. Uh, the, the, the point is to foster communication and connection and uh, love of music, uh, among other things. This week, I'm doing one of my favorite things, which is discussing an obscure album by an obscure band. Uh, not obscure like the Dead Milkmen who have a following still and who are still around and if you're from Philly or from a certain area you know them even though they are a lesser known band and obscure to many people. I'm talking super duper obscure uh, and um, you know this is how this is how I find things sometimes or this is how I used to find things. Have you ever been uh, to a bookstore. Uh, sometimes you go, you know exactly what you want, you go and get it, you're gone. But did you ever go in just to browse? Uh, I used to do this a lot when I would uh, vacation down the shore, especially in Cape May, New Jersey. And uh, you weren't sure what you wanted, but you knew you wanted something. So you went in and, and looked through a bunch of things, a, a cover or a title or a description, you know, struck your interest and you said, okay, I'm gonna get it. And you bring it home and either one of three things happen, either you fall in love with it, and it becomes your uh, one of your favorite authors, favorite artists, and you follow them until you, until you can't anymore. Or you like it, you're really glad you bought it, you know, not so much that you want to buy another book by that author or album by that artist, but you know, you were really happy that you did that, you were exposed to something new. Or you wish you could have your money back because you realize after the first few pages of first song that this is just not for you. Uh, this band that you're hearing behind me, who I will discuss in a moment, falls into that second category. Glad I bought the album, ended up not really following them. They weren't around that long anyway, but um, still again, very happy that I bought it and that I still own it. I used to do this a lot at Tower Records, uh, Sam Goody, for those of you who uh, would frequent malls, or uh, Full Circle Records, my favorite local record shop, which closed several years ago, but was the mainstay for me because it was within walking or biking or, of course, car distance from my house in Clementson, New Jersey. Uh, and I would go into stores like this, again, sometimes knowing exactly what I wanted. I'd go there to get a Prince or U2 or something like that. Uh, but sometimes I'd go in and either take a recommendation for someone who was working there, or, you know, how they say, you know, staff picks, things like that, or just pick out something that looked interesting to me. Uh, it was a long time ago. This album here is by a band called Royal Crescent Mob. It's called Spin the World. And uh, this came out in 1989, so that's 30 years ago. I can't remember how I got it, why I got it, if I had heard of it before, anything like that, which is one of my favorite things. You're, you're sifting through your collection, whether it was my cassettes, or my uh, 45s and you know 78s and all those things, or, or currently the LPs, and you're like, oh, wow, yeah, I remember this. I kind of remember getting this. I have no idea what it sounded like or anything like that. You get to rediscover it again. So Royal Crescent Mob uh, is a band that came from Ohio, uh, uh, led by a guy named Harold Happy Chichester. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And uh, they started in the mid-80s. This was their third or fourth album, I really can't remember. You can go ahead and click that link and look it up on, my, on the Wikipedia uh, page uh, that I have below. Uh, below. Uh, and they were in the vein of uh, a Fishbone or a Red Hot Chili Peppers, but with more of kind of a, a crunchy, not so much roots, but a little more, you know, g g guitar rock oriented. They even had a little smidgen of G Love and Special Sauce. Uh, for those of you who know who that is or know who any of these bands are, I'm sure you know Red Hot Chili Peppers. Um, and uh, there's a chance I may have heard of them, and that's, you know, they maybe read about them in Rolling Stone or something like that, and that's why I got this album. If they were compared to any of those bands, G Love wasn't really around at the time uh, in any big way if at all, uh, in, in 89, but Fishbone, RHCP, then that's probably why I got this. Uh, so, you know, I'm listening through to it now, and as I, you know, as I take a, take a look at my notes, they have that mix of kind of funky, punky rock, uh, you know, but 
they again were from Ohio. So I, I always thought these guys were from California, probably because of the you know Chili Peppers, um, you know connection and things like that. And I'm listening through this. I listened to it on YouTube uh, the other day, and then you know as you can hear, I put on the LP on my Victrola turntable back there. Um, and uh, realize that, hey, I actually do like this band, and um, it's kind of cool. They didn't have a great career. They started out uh, with some indie releases. They did get signed. I think this was one of the bigger albums. That's probably why I got it. And, uh, and then put out a few more albums. Nothing big happened with them, and they petered out by the mid-'90s. They broke up. Um, so there's really not, you know, unfortunately, a whole lot out there about them or, or, or a whole lot to, to say uh, about them here, which, again, it seems weird. Okay, why pick this, you know, other than it's in my collection? Well, that's because, it's, again, it's one of my favorite things to do is to kind of, you know, be an investigator and suss out why in the world do I have this and why did I like it, which I did and do, and, um, you know, how does it connect to any, any of the music I do? Well, I can tell you pretty definitively that I was not influenced by Royal Crescent Mob or Spin the World uh, or, or any of that. Uh, but I was influenced by that kind of music. I've always been into funky music. I've always been into music that has a, a mix of genres, in this case, kind of funk and rock and punk. Um, I wouldn't call what Chichester did rapping, but he has that kind of cadence about him. Uh, again, sort of like a G-Love thing where it's a little more kind of laid back and, you know, sort of doing it, but sort of not doing it, which, you know, I guess you could call a slacker approach to it, which again, cool. It's another reason why I probably liked it. Um, but because they were like bands like Fishbone, like Red Hot Chili Peppers, there is that influence in there for, for me. Uh, you can hear that a lot in a lot of the music I do, especially some of the, you know, uh, recent stuff, uh, you know, like No Way Out For Me and things like that. But the song that I'm picking this week is one that is one of my all time favorites because, um, you know, you have a song in your head and you, you write it, you, you hone it, you hone it live, you hone it in the studio, you hone it while you're rehearsing and these things. You get it to a point where you know the structure is, is, is perfect, exactly what it needs to be. The lyrics are just what they need to be. Doesn't mean that when you produce it, it's going to come out the way you hear it. This one did. This is one of those handful of songs, a uh, hefty handful that came out exactly the way I wanted it to in my head and was kind of a forward looking track for me because it came out in 2007 and, um, you know, kind of looked ahead to some of the stuff that I'd be releasing uh, later on. Uh, it was also one of the last uh, songs that I recorded with a full band, um, my band Rec, REC. Uh, for those of you who know me, you know the band. This is from my album Parts and Labor which is on iTunes, on Spotify, it's on YouTube, it's everywhere. And it's the song called Some Things Happen. Um, it, you can, I mean, listen to what you're hearing back here. I'll, I'll give you three seconds. Maybe not this song, I don't know. But look up, as I always say, I urge you to click the links. Look up Royal Crescent Mob. Listen to uh, some of the favorites that I have listed, uh, you know, in the text below, which, is, which are Big Show, Hungry, Corporation Enema, Na Na Na, and Going to the Hospital. And, and then, uh, especially, there's, a, there's an acoustic version of Going to the Hospital that Happy Chichester did many, many years later that really shows what a, what a cool kind of you know, vibe he has and cool, cool take on music. You know, uh, Royal Crescent Mob, uh, or RC Mob, as apparently fans of theirs call them, uh, had. And then once you've listened to that, please click on the link for Some Things Happen and listen to that. You'll find that funkiness in there. You'll find the rock. You'll find that kind of like uh, punk attitude as well. Uh, and, and the lyrics uh, are very, they're very personal to me. Each one of those lyrics refers to something that happened in my life up until that point. So, you know, and what I try to do is I try to make things dynamic and fun and interesting and catchy and and uh, something you want to listen to, but also always keep them personal. Uh, so really, that's it for this week. It's a, it, you know, it, that's pretty much all I got as far as Royal Crescent Mob and everything else. Please, as always, uh, again, and I know I'm repeating myself, but comment below, click the links, share this if you'd like. 
explore further, explore RC Mob further, explore any other the other bands I mentioned further. Mention your experiences in record stores. And, uh, you know, more than that, the thing that I have is the title, the kind of the subtitle this week, which is, how do you discover new music these days, uh, rand randomly? There are still ways to do it, and I still do it. Uh, sadly, I don't do it much in record shops anymore. There's an awesome little record shop in Harlem called Cinderblock People. If you're anywhere near Harlem, look it up and go to it. It's one of, uh, of several of its kind in the city and I'm sure beyond the city. I know Philly has a ton of them, things like that. I'm glad to see that there are people who love physical music who are still out there. I'm not gonna lie, I love Spotify. I love, love, love Spotify. I hear a song, I think of a song, I can dial it up and play it right away. But I also super love going to record shops and just browsing. Uh, so, you know, if this was a PSA, I'd say go do that. Uh, but it's not. So just listen to the links. And uh, thanks again for listening. Next week is Thanksgiving. And it's also the day of my birthday. So I think I'm going to skip uh, Thursday throwback track for that day. And I will see you uh, in early December. 